Welcome, I'm Don Renfrew and for the next hour or so I'm going to be talking about imaging of chest pain. I'm a member of the Radiology and Associates of the Fox Valley and I'm a private practice radiologist in Wisconsin. Radiology Associates is a 30 plus person radiology group covering nine different hospitals in central Wisconsin. The hospital I work at most of the time is Door County Memorial Hospital shown on this slide and on this slide. Door County Memorial Hospital is a 25-bed Catholic hospital and it has a relatively small radiology department as a 25-bed hospital would be expected to have. It is a critical access facility uh, and it's 50 miles from the nearest hospital. It's actually uh, relatively geographically isolated in the uh, Door County Peninsula. Uh, on the slide with the map you can see where the star uh, the red star is where the, the hospital is. It's about 50 miles or so from Green Bay. Um, I'm usually the only radiologist uh, in the hospital and as such I answer a lot of questions from family practitioners and nurse practitioners and physician's assistants and um, other uh, healthcare practitioners who want to know what study to order for a particular indication or symptom. Um, I'm also director of Grand Rounds at, to Door County Memorial Hospital and in that capacity uh, I've built some lectures that discuss the topics of what study to order for a given clinical indication. Uh, this lecture is one of those lectures and this lecture deals with imaging of chest pain. You have a lot of options for imaging chest pain and you're not even really limited to what's here, the CT, plain films, nuclear medicine studies of the uh, lungs, of the ventilation perfusion study, nuclear medicine study of the heart, myocardial perfusion study, um, plain films of the ribs, uh, um, CT angiography now of the coronary arteries. There's a lot of different kinds of studies that you can do for patients with chest pain. And of course at the same time you want to order the right study the first time every time. And so my job today is to tell you uh, what study to order for your patient with chest pain. The four points I'm going to make today are number one, there are multiple options when imaging chest pain. Uh, you have many different imaging studies that you can order to evaluate chest pain. I'm going to review briefly what those are. Number two, everyone with chest pain who needs imaging typically will get a chest x-ray. They may get other additional studies or they may only need a chest x-ray, but pretty much everybody with chest pain who does get any imaging gets a chest x-ray. The third point is that in those patients that have severe shortness of breath, severe chest pain, and for those reasons or for any other reasons are suspected to have a pulmonary embolism, emergency chest CT angiography or CTA should be obtained. Finally, for those patients with suspected coronary artery disease, imaging depends on the clinical condition of the patient and risk assessment. And you're going to try to figure out three things with those patients. Is a cardiac event or infarction presently occurring? Is the patient's chest pain secondary to coronary artery narrowing? And how likely is the patient to have a cardiac event in the future? And your imaging will depend on which of those three issues you're trying to tackle. There are multiple Im uh, imaging options uh, for chest pain. You can order any of several exams, like a plain film, CT scan, nuclear medicine, MR, uh, ultrasound. Um, plain film examinations, uh, there's a few different options here. Your standard two-view chest x-ray. Two-view chest x-ray done in the department is typically done with a patient upright. It's done PA, so that the x-ray tube is behind the patient, the x-rays are coming through the patient from the posterior to anterior direction, or PA, uh, and this, uh, this creates the heart, it's, it, it magnifies the heart shadow in such a fashion uh, that uh, it should be less than half of the transverse diameter of the chest. Um, the lateral is also taken at 72 inches with the patient's left side against the film cassette or film recording device. Uh, it used to be that uh, x-rays were x-rays in the sense that they were made on pieces of film and transported around physically. Now pretty much everything is done uh, electronically and uh, the images are stored in packs and immediately transmittable to anywhere that has available, uh, you know, some login computer connection available with the packs. Um, 
Single view chest x-ray, you know, one direction only done if you're really worried about radiation, if it's a follow-up study, um, sometimes in, in, in other circumstances. Uh, a portable x-ray, of course portable x-rays are good for those patients that are direly ill in the emergency room or on the patient floor. Uh, that can't be transported to the department. They're going to magnify the cardiomediastinal silhouette. They're not going to be as good of quality as an upright two-view chest. The cubitus chest exam with the patient on one or the other side, those were typically performed in the past to evaluate free-flowing fluid or a small amounts of air and to see whether that, that would go to the dependent portion of the chest or not. Um, not very frequently performed anymore, frankly, because it's kind of those kind of been supplanted by chest, act, or chest CT exams. Rib detail exams, uh, specific views to detect whether there are any broken ribs or rib lesions, uh, a little higher detail. Um, one note is that standard two-view chest x-rays are technically optimized to evaluate lung parenchyma and the mediastinum. And because of that, they're shot with a higher KV, and that tends to burn out the ribs a bit. So you don't, you don't see the ribs all that well on a standard chest x-ray. You don't see them much better on rib detail films. If it's important to know whether a patient's got a rib fracture, it, usually rib detail film is what you want to do. And in it, you'll not only take the films with the lower KV, you'll also take multiple projections because the whole arc of the rib can be difficult to, to see on any one given projection. So here's an example of a standard PA and lateral chest x-ray, nice young person, uh, PA study, the heart size is less than half the transverse diameter of the thorax at that point. Um, on the lateral, you see that the vertebral bodies become less white, more gray or black as you go from the top to the bottom. You see both coxophrenic angles nicely. Um, actually, this film, is, uh, I, I clipped the photograph just a little bit, or the picture just a little bit, because the, the, uh, the, the native chest x-ray did show those angles a little better. Um, CT angiogram of the chest is another study that you can do. Um, typically, a standard contrast enhanced exam is obtained for cough and dyspnea. Uh, now, for uh, chest CT, you can optimize the enhancement of the arterial tree, and it's called the CTA or chest computed tomographic angiogram. The data from the techniques post processed to create specific views of the pulmonary arterial tree, usually in a no black plane and you optimize those for visualization of the main pulmonary arteries. Um, for CT exam of the chest, you want to use contrast. Uh, that will involve a power injector uh, and typically non-ionic contrast. There are several varieties of contrast as noted on this slide. Um, and uh, historically, the development has been sort of from the top of that slide to the bottom with uh, older generations ionic contrast supplanted by uh, ionic and non-ionic contrast, um, and uh, I'll actually give a, a lecture uh, about a third of which is devoted to contrast, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about contrast here. Uh, I will note that it's changed through the years, um, and uh, the agents at the bottom of the table had theoretical advantages. The ice is smaller contrast material, uh, and law is smaller contrast material tend to provoke less trouble on the part of the patient. Uh, they're probably no different in um, fatal anaphylactic reactions or anaphylactic like reactions, but they are uh, less likely to provoke uh, uh, more minor reactions like nausea and so forth. Coronary artery calcium scoring uh, is another study done with a CT scan. It can be used to measure coronary artery calcium content. Uh, and so it's, called, it's also called CACS or coronary artery calcium scoring. Uh, for this study, you use an EKG but no contrast. And the idea here is the patient's hooked up to an EKG. A non contrast study is obtained, and the data acquisition is coordinated with a heartbeat to eliminate motion. And then you measure how much calcium there is in the coronary arteries. And I'll kind of go into a little more detail on, on that, on this particular study later. Another way of doing um, uh, obtaining information, and this is a sort of an in process or, or a new evaluation, is a, a CT, a coronary artery CT angiogram or CCTA. In this study, you use a, an EKG to um, gate uh, the information as you obtain it, and you also use a contrast material. Um, 
This is a map of the coronary arterial tree, and it's obtained with EKG and IV contrast. For a 64 slice scanner, your heart rate's got to be below 70, and uh, many patients will require beta blockers to get to that rate. Uh, CT scanners with more slices and faster imaging um, can use can, can obtain CT angiography of the coronary arteries at higher heart rates, and we'll visit these uh, sort of in the, uh, visit the scan in the appropriate context. Uh, rule out triple. What is a triple, and why are we ruling it out? Well. A triple is when you have somebody with uh, uh, chest pain that you're working up, particularly in the emergency room that's severe in nature, and you're looking for uh, pulmonary embolism, dissecting aortic aneurysm of the thoracic aorta, and uh, coronary artery disease or heart attack. And at present, uh, at least with uh, the, our scanners as we're doing them now, a CTA and a or a, a CT of the pulmonary arteries and a CTA of the coronary arteries. It's hard to perform both of those simultaneously with the same bolts of contrast. Uh, although as this, evolved, as this technology evolves, we're probably not too far off from doing that. And uh, as that happens, I think it's, it's probably going to revolutionize the way emergency room medicine is practiced in terms of taking care of chest pain patients and imaging those patients. Um, nuclear medicine studies, there's a couple of different kinds of nuclear medicine studies that are performed in people with chest pain. Um, primary care providers may order ventilation perfusion lung scans for patients suspected to have pulmonary embolism and who can't have a CT angiogram because they're, they've got contrast allergy or have renal insufficiency. Uh, ventilation studies, uh, ventilation perfusion studies, they rely on the distribution of two different radioactively labeled substances. One's an aerosol that's used to evaluate ventilation, and then the other's an IV substance, uh, which is uh, filtered by the small level pulmonary uh, vascular capillaries, and that evaluates perfusion. You compare those two to figure out whether somebody has a ventilation perfusion mismatch suggestive of pulmonary embolism. Nuclear medicine studies also include infarct avid imaging, but uh, those aren't done much anymore. That's, that test has been largely supplanted by serial uh, enzyme evaluations.